Well, there's been a shock resignation from the Greek finance minister, Yanis Varoufakis. The Greek Australian has only been in the role a couple of months but made life hell for the country's creditors. He's orchestrated Greece, voting overwhelmingly overnight against further austerity. The Australian market rallied in response to his resignation. I'm joined now by Anne Pettiford, Director of Policy Research at the UK think tank Prime Economics. She's also a member of the New Economics Foundation and she joins me from London. Anne, thank you for your time. We've seen what Greece doesn't want. What exactly does it want now? And how does the resignation of uh, its finance minister change that? Well, that's a, those are very tough questions. First of all, I think Greece wants and needs uh, a decision about her debt from uh, European creditors uh, and the acknowledgement, as the IMF has acknowledged, that it's not repayable and that she cannot be forced um, effectively into bankruptcy. Uh, secondly, uh, Greece needs fiscal space. She needs the ability to be able to begin to re recover her economy uh, from what is one of the most profound depressions in our history, uh, a depression that's worse than the depression endured by some countries during the 1930s. So Greece needs uh, uh, European creditors to understand her problems. But the real issue here, if I may say so, is not Greece. The real issue here is the euro and whether it can survive this crisis. And I think what happened last night and what happened yesterday poses a severe threat to the continuation of the euro. Do you think that there's any chance that uh, Greece will leave and others will follow now? That is what ev is in everybody's minds. Uh, the Spanish uh, electorate are having elections in the autumn. Podemos, the, the political party that's anti-austerity there, will take huge courage from this result and will be boosted by it. Um, and that will pose a threat again uh, to the euro. Uh, the question is that the euro is an unsustainable currency. Uh, there is, uh, it's a super, it's, it's, a, it's 19 countries, 17 countries governed by one supranational institution, which is the European Central Bank. And the European Central Bank cannot and should not set fiscal policy for those countries. It can only deal in monetary policy. And the absence of any other institutions for managing fiscal policy uh, is what's at the heart of this crisis. And can I say, when you said Europe, when it was said beforehand that Europe is Germany, Europe is not Germany. And that is one of the issues that is going to uh, cause divisions here and, and, uh, and tensions. So what do you think is going to be the outcome or, or the topic of the conversations that are going to go on between European leaders um, and the IMF uh, tonight and in the following days? It's very difficult to know because European leaders, including Mr. Juncker and Mr. Disselblum, all of those people at, at the Brussels European Commission, have said that this no vote would lead to an exit of Greece from the Eurozone. Well, they've boxed, them, boxed themselves into the corner, but there is no legal provision under the European treaties for them to expel uh, Greece, and Greece has no intention of leaving and doesn't have to leave and cannot be forced to leave. So having boxed themselves into this corner, they now have to withdraw and admit that they cannot expel Greece and she cannot be removed from the Eurozone and they're going to have to deal with her. And the question then will be on what terms. But they are the, the losers in, in this result. They are the ones that have uh, messed up these negotiations, that used their positions to threaten the Greek people, only to find it rebound on them as it has today. And just lastly, we got the news a short time ago that Yanis Varoufakis has stood down from his role, uh, saying that you know his his position wasn't tenable uh, in uh, in going forward with negotiations with European leaders. What do you make of that? I think the Greeks are snatching de defeat from the mouth of victory. Uh, really, uh, the fact is Yanis Varoufakis has been a superb finance minister. He's been right. The IMF have proved him right. Um, and he's now been made a scapegoat. Um, and I think that that, again, is what the European leaders would like to see. But what they would like to see is probably not the right thing for either Greece or for the Eurozone. We have seen that their judgment is very, very poor and that they have landed Europe in this awful mess. Um, his judgment has been correct. 
his his diplomacy and his style has been clumsy and inept and uh, and has annoyed people sure uh, but he's a new finance minister this is a new government and it's inexperienced that's what one would expect but it's not diplomacy that matters here it's whether the economic the macroeconomics of this crisis are properly and correctly analyzed and they are not by all the powerful creditors in Brussels and indeed in Frankfurt and that's the real a problem mr very Farkas is not the problem so i think this decision is regrettable when uh, when actually greece was at, at a moment of uh, if you like correct assessment of the judgment that judgments that he had made and petafor we'll have to leave it there thank you very much for your time thank you